Hey guys, welcome back to The Unsavvy Budgeter. For those of you that are new to this channel, my name's Cindy and I take you along with me on my debt-free journey to pay off over $71,000 in credit card and student loan debt. So in this video, we decided that we wanted to re-budget our month of May just because we had analyzed what we did in April. And as we were doing our budget update, we felt like we needed to make adjustments for this month just because we had a lot going on. We also didn't account for the checking balance that we had left over at the end of the month. So even though it seemed like we didn't have any money left and we were still able to do pretty decent debt payoffs, it turned out that we did have remaining money in our checking balance and that's what we were using to kind of offset for the debt payoff and any other expenses that we were over budget on. So we felt like we weren't truly following a zero based budget. So that's why we decided we wanted to make some revisions this time around. So as you can see, we have really changed the look of our budget for May. And we wanted to test out this template going forward, but we decided that we wanted to try and make this look more like a dashboard. I love dashboards and I love being able to kind of see everything in my face as well as have some nice visuals as to, you know, what's happening in our financial day to day. So I kind of wanted to quickly go over these changes with you guys. As you can see, we'll start from the left. You have the table that has our income sources. We decided that we wanted to change this to just show the projected paychecks. We already know what we're going to get at the start of every month. Our paychecks don't really change. It's kind of a fixed income that we have. So our projected paychecks for this month, we're looking at a little over $10,500. Side hustles, that is remaining the same reimbursements other it all looks familiar from what you guys had seen earlier for our May budget and now we have that total income of close to $12,500 for the month we've added this table called available balance to account for that checking account money that we have at the end of every month and Ending balance as of last month, we had $5,665.80. We wanted to account for that and add it with our projected income sources for the month. And that actually gives us a total available balance of $18,162.54. So this is more of a true number that we expect to be working with. This next table we've added is amount to be budgeted. This kind of shows our available balance that you guys have seen earlier with the total available. And we decided that we wanted to add a line item for a safety buffer. We don't feel comfortable truly having zero dollars in our bank accounts just because there could be any unexpected expenses that come along and we want to make sure that we don't get into a negative balance and accrue any bank fees for that. So we decided that we wanted to leave a running balance of $500 in our checking account to account for those unexpected expenses. Next, we have our early next month expenses. I've mentioned that in previous videos, how we have the beginning of every month, like our mortgage payment to pay for along with the HOA fees. That typically gets billed to us before our first paycheck of the month comes in. So that's why we always set aside money at the end of the month to account for that. So we're looking at a little over $2,200 for early next month expenses. And then this budgeted section, this is pulling the totals of this table over here with all the categories that we've budgeted for. So everything you see here under the budgeted column is added and that's where this number is coming from. And we also have a remaining balance based on all of these deductions. And that's what we really wanted to pay attention to for our monthly budget is any leftover money that we have. We wanna take the time to 
readjust our budget and add to any categories that we think that we need additional money added to for any upcoming things for the month. Like, for example, for this month, we know we're going to be traveling, so we want to make sure that we kind of up our budget for food, which is a big category that we tend to be over budget for, and that's an area that we've thought about adding to there. The next section we added is an over budget section. This is really important for us to track is this line item here in red because it tells us how much we're over budget for in our categories. We definitely don't want to be over budget and as I'm seeing the things here in red that I am over budget for, that's where I want to take my available balance that needs to be budgeted and adjust those categories that I'm seeing red in so that it balances out a little bit more. So before I dive in and adjust our budgeted categories to use up this remaining money, I wanted to ask you guys what you guys currently think about this new dashboard that we created. And I know that we're constantly changing our budget. So let me know in the comments how your budget has evolved since you started your debt-free journey. All right, so let's go ahead and make the changes. You guys are going to see me do this live. So first thing I want to adjust is pet care. I see that I'm over budget here by $174.74. So because I have this $3,800 left over that can be budgeted, I'm going to make an adjustment here. So I'm gonna to go to pet care and I'm going to add $174.74 to balance that out. And as you can see, pet care has adjusted to $329.74. So now there's a difference of zero, which is what I like to see. For this category, we were over budget because our vet expenses ended up being a lot more than anticipated. We just switched to a new vet and they wanted to do a wellness exam and to just check our two cats that we brought in. So it ended up being a lot more than we anticipated. So that's why we wanted to go ahead and adjust for that. Then in our other category, I am over budget by $1.95. I actually had a fee when I paid my second student loan off just because that student loan if I wanted to pay with my checking account electronically there was a $1.95 processing fee that I didn't know about so I had to account for that so I'm going to go ahead and make that change here and I'm going to add a dollar ninety five to that budget and that has changed now to sixty eight dollars and thirty seven cents so I'm zeroed out there. The next thing I want to change is my food category. I am already over budget of $34.34 and we wanted to go ahead and add an additional $600 just because we're going on vacation soon and we're going to have a week off so we wanted to just give ourselves a little break and not be so tight on the budget so we're giving ourselves a little breathing room here and we're going to add that six hundred dollars so now you see the food category has gone up to one thousand dollars and this is green again which we're really happy about i also thought it was a good idea to add to this just because I am so bad at staying under budget in the food category. And instead of being so tight, I just decided that, hey, let's just readjust it now and we'll try and stay under the new budget that we've added. So the next line item I want to adjust is my personal spend. This is the money that we're going to be using to pay for our travel expenses, mostly hotel. So that hotel that we booked hasn't been charged yet. It's not going to be charged until we actually check in. So we want to go ahead and add $785 there. That brings it up to $1,070. So now this is green again. Then we have our sinking fund that we wanted to adjust. Even though we're zeroed out, we just had some 
expenses come up, which is fixing our fence and doing some paint work for our home. We're trying to get our home ready to be rented out when it comes time for us to move. And the fence is definitely in really bad shape and needs to be fixed probably end of this month into next month. So after talking to my husband, we decided that it's just better to start increasing our sinking fund for that now, especially since the work is going to get started end of this month already. So we've decided to add $650. Also, speaking of fixing our fence, we've had crazy quotes just on how much of it costs to fix our fence. I mean, I don't know if you guys have heard, but like lumber prices have gone up and just prices in general and everything has gone up. And it's so crazy to hear the numbers that we're getting. We've gone to Home Depot and Lowe's to get a quote and we've been quoted like as high as $8,000 just to fix our fence. And we don't even have that big of a home. Actually, my husband just corrected me. It's actually $13,000 that we were quoted to fix our fence. And we have a pretty small home and our yard is not that big at all. So that was just mind blowing to hear that number. So we shopped around and finally just ended up asking somebody we knew that we felt could refer or recommend somebody to us and we ended up going with them. But let me know in the comments if you guys have heard crazy quotes like this just for like home renovations because I'm just in shock. All right, so our sinking funds have increased there to $1,560. Hopefully that's going to cover at least half of our expenses for the fence. Then we wanted to adjust the debt payoff since we were able to pay more than we had anticipated. So I'm going to make that change now. And I'm adding $1,318.69. Now my debt payoff is zeroed out. As you guys see that as I was making those changes, this to be budgeted section was also getting adjusted and you saw that number decreasing. Now I'm $0 over budget, which is exactly what I want to see. And I'm happy that we still have a little over $200 left to work with. I was thinking that $280 could go towards the debt payoff and I can start using that money to pay my student loan number three. It's not much, but it's something and we already made pretty good progress this month with the debt payoff. So I'm happy with that. And I feel good about it because we already have the safety buffer of $500 left in case of any other unexpected fees or expenses. All right. So with that $280 and 46 cents, I'm going to add that to the debt payoff as well. So we're going to add to 80, 46. So now you see that the debt payoff has adjusted and now this is zeroed out and this is still zero and it looks great. Everything's green, nothing in red. At first I was feeling guilty about adjusting my budget categories because I thought maybe that's not what you're supposed to do and I didn't want to feel like I was cheating by giving myself more money. But after doing some research and talking it over with my husband, we decided that, hey, we have all this money left over. And in these circumstances, when we know that we have a lot of big expenses coming up, it's best to just readjust and account for it instead of stressing about being over budget and then having all that leftover money and covering the differences. So that's why we decided to go ahead and just rebudget our categories and give ourselves some more breathing room. And this section with the percentage of each category spent, this is our bar graph. We changed it slightly. It's showing the percentages of how much we actually spent from what we've budgeted. So you'll see that our debt payoff, we've already used close to 85% of our allocated budget. And Uncle Sam, that's already like 100% used up. 
and so on and so forth. So this is a good visual for us to kind of see how much of our budget we have left over in each category and if we're close to maxing out on everything or if we're over 100% then we know that we are over budget on that category. So I hope you guys like this new dashboard view. I'm pretty stoked about it. I wish I was as talented in Excel to do this myself. So a lot of this credit really goes to my husband. He is the Excel master. And I like this visual a lot more just because it gets really busy seeing all the lines and all the cells. So I think this is a lot prettier. But let me know in the comments if you agree or disagree. Also, if you like the new dashboard, give it a thumbs up. And I hope that you guys are going to be happy seeing this new template going forward for the future months. So thanks so much, you guys, for watching this video. I know it's not normal for me to kind of rebudget, but we felt like we really needed to. So I hope that you guys found this helpful. Let me know also if you've had to do a rebudget week at all. So I don't feel like this is totally abnormal to do. Yeah, that's all I got for today. So thanks so much for watching, you guys. And don't forget to subscribe to the channel if you haven't already and click that notification bell so that you can stay tuned for future budget videos like this. And I hope to catch you guys in the next one.